Hi, this is Gary Hoover. I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about my new company, Big Wig Games. It's my fifth startup. I guess if you count the three I did in college, my eighth startup. First of all, a little bit about me. I became interested in business as a little kid. I grew up in a General Motors factory town and nobody could answer my questions about business. And so at the age of 12, 50 years ago this summer, I discovered the Fortune 500. And I've been subscribing to Fortune ever since. Uh, and, and I got really in depth about how business works. How do you understand it? What makes her winners and losers? What are the basic dynamics of businesses? And I got interested in very specific industries. By the time I was 14 or 15, I was creating games like this one called Merchant Prince, which allowed you to create a department store chain, buying up Macy's and Marshall Fields and all that. And really, my whole life has been about understanding and celebrating free enterprise. I think nothing is more exciting. No NFL or, or uh, NBA competition is as exciting as the competition between Coke and Pepsi or again, General Motors against Toyota, against Ford and all that. So I think it's both exciting but it's also really important because nothing creates jobs like the free enterprise system. Like entrepreneurs, whether they're nonprofit or for-profit entrepreneurs, dreaming up ideas, creating jobs, making the world a better place. So my life has been about understanding and celebrating enterprise. The other thing that I've been focused on is finding opportunities where nobody else is looking. And I've kept a list since I was a little kid of business ideas. My current tablet here, tablet number 217, I've got about 230 business ideas in there. And those have led to creating real businesses that uh, uh, succeeded. Uh, the first one I created was called Bookstop. That was the first chain of book superstores. Nobody thought you could take on B. Dalton and Walden books. No, why do we need a big box bookstores, whatever. And uh, we created those um, uh, called Bookstop. We ended up coast to coast, Florida to California. Uh, seven years later, um, it was bought by Barnes & Noble for $41 million. And so nobody really saw that coming. Next thing, because I love business and because I've also discovered most people don't know much about business. Even business people, they may know their own company, maybe their own industry, but they rarely understand the whole economy and how it fits together. And, and, and our education system for kids, for economics and business is not that great. And so that led me to create a company called Hoover's. And we came out with the uh, Hoover's Handbook. Here's the, uh, the first one right here, 1990. Uh, and uh, actually the company was called the Reference Press at first, then later renamed Hoover's after the books. And then it more uh, over to uh, mainly an online information company, went public in 1999, and in 2003, uh, um, Dun & Bradstreet bought it for $117 million. So I'm always looking for opportunities. I'm looking at trends. I'm trying to see what's going to happen 5, 10, even 15 years out into the future. So when I look at that now, and I look through all my ideas, uh, one of the big trends is, I call them touch devices. The names will evolve. I mean, uh, uh, tablets, uh, uh, smartphones are in there, but there's a whole new way of dealing with computers and computer-like gadgets. Uh, and and uh, the iPad has led the way. Uh, Apple has uh, around a 50% market share. Uh, the, the adoption of the iPad has been three times as fast as it was for the iPhone in its first three years of existence. It just came out today that the uh, Los Angeles School District uh, is buying almost 50,000 iPads, spending $30 million to give iPads to all the students. And, and tablets and tablet-like devices are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. They're going to become very already important. They're going to become more important. Next thing, games. Games, uh, if you look at how people spend their time on mobile devices, they spend almost half their time on games, far more than they spend on social media or email or anything else. And, and, and the game business is going crazy. There's like 100,000 games out there. Um, but it's a key part of how people live today. Oh, uh, something like two-thirds of all Americans will play some form of game during any given year. Uh, many people are out there uh, playing every day. And games are pervading bigger parts of society. They're becoming important in schools, in education, in training, in corporations, even in marketing, the whole gamification or gamification or whatever you call it. Uh, lots of books about all that. So that's another big trend and obviously something I believe in since my childhood because I invented game after game about different industries. 
A third thing that's hotter than ever is business and entrepreneurship. 1963, when I was buying Fortune magazine, I was really out on a limb. There was nobody else thinking like that. Today, I travel the world. I've been to 45 countries. I speak and teach entrepreneurship and how to build great enterprises to corporate markets. But I uh, talked all the way down to like high school kids, junior high school kids, all over the world. Entrepreneurship is about the hottest thing going. People love business. People are more engaged and more interested, and at earlier ages. Uh, uh, and and I see this opportunity to combine these trends. Now you might ask, does somebody, does anybody really want to play games about business? Well, the most successful board game of all time, Monopoly, uh, was created by an economics teacher, and it's really about business. Uh, the tycoon games were played by millions of people. Even your Sim City and all that, they have resource management and resource allocation, and they have markets. Uh, uh, Settlers of Catan, a big selling board game, includes uh, markets and resources and all that. Uh, a Ticket to Ride has sold over two million copies of that board game in a space around the railroad industry. So when I see all that, I say, hey, there's an opportunity here that goes back to, to my core beliefs and the things I've been working on all my life. So we've created big wig games, and we're going to make games starting with the iPad and later going to other tablets that simulate businesses and the economy. So it's your fantasy chance to run your own company, run your own business. What makes our games different from what's on the market? Because that's a key thing. The first thing is all bigwig games are custom made for tablets. Very few games take your photo when you're a player in the game. Very few games allow you to shoot a video that you might use in, say, a movie industry game. Uh, uh, they don't use the sound capabilities to the full capability to let the players record sounds and their emotions and their reactions. Using GPS in games, our games will be location-based, so playing the game in Austin will be different from playing it in Dallas and everything. And then just the whole touch and swipe and, you know, uh, drag and drop experience we're going to focus on those and maximize those. Second thing about our games is that they are industry specific. There's ga there are games out there, uh, simulation games in business schools and everything, where you run an industry. You make widgets or something. No, each of our, I have a list of 90 industries that we want to model, and each of our industries, uh, each of our games will be about a specific industry, and we've decided to start with the restaurant industry. With 900,000 restaurants in America, $600 billion business, 13 million employees, pervasive in our society, perhaps the most fundamentally entrepreneurial part of our entire economy, the selling of, whether it's food, uh, or restaurants or food trucks. And so each game uh, will, will be about a specific industry. This is, the third thing is we use real industry data. We can't find anybody else doing that. Maybe in an academic environment or something, but I took the um, National Restaurant Association. They do a study of the restaurant industry uh, every couple or three years. And I took all this data out of this thing. Uh, what are the profits, the food costs, the labor cost for fine dining, for fast food, for family dining? What are rents run? Uh, how does your profit go up as your sales go up? Because they have you know best performers, worst performers. Took all that data and converted it into the score system inside our first game, the restaurant game, which we've already play tested extensively. We've spent hundreds of man hours play testing with cards and spreadsheets, and now we actually have a prototype on the iPad. Fourth thing about our games, advertising and sponsorship. It, you know, if you're playing Angry Birds, and there's an ad for like Hershey bars, I'm not sure that does a whole lot of good for Angry Birds or Hershey bars. I'm not, I'm not knocking either of those, those folks. Those are <laughs> far more successful than, than I've ever been. So great outfits, but our games, because they're about business, are ideal places for sponsorship. For a restaurant to put their restaurant in the game. Uh, for a restaurant supplier, Budweiser, Coca-Cola, Heinz, are you listening? To put them in the game. There are marketing opportunities where you run a little marketing campaign. So a, a television station, a radio station, a website could sponsor a little one. So we think there are lots of opportunities. And for trade associations, trade publications, trade schools, uh, even le learning and educational applications potentially. So we think that we're unique in our ability to have um, extra revenue streams which are always going to be great on top of the sale of the game. The basic game will probably be free. There'll be in-app purchases. We have a number of revenue streams uh, that, that we think are out there. The fifth idea, and maybe the biggest one, is that we have an integrated economy. We're calling it the Wigonomy for all you big wigs out there. Can I even spell it yet? The idea is that the games will talk to each other. 
So let's say you're playing a real estate game and you build a shopping center on uh, North Lamar here in Austin because they'll be location based. And then a restaurant and, and you say, I'd like a restaurant out here in the corner pad, if you know real estate language. And, and the restaurant game, they compete. They bid to get whoever will pay the highest rent gets that space if it's a good shopping center. Maybe the rents go down because it's not that great and the restaurants won't do that great. Uh, uh, you, there'll be people in the beer game and the soft drink game and they'll be trying to get their products into the restaurant game. The restaurant operators might go next door to the hotel game. The uh, people who make money in this thing will save up in a common bank account. Maybe they'll buy a really ritzy car from the auto manufacturers game. Maybe well, their company will go public through the investment banking game or go through the venture capital game. Maybe they'll sue their partner in the court game. There's no limit to what we can dream up. Our goal right now is to launch the restaurant game in early 2014. We're uh, ahead of schedule and, and uh, better than budget so far on it. Um, and then my goal is uh, uh, model 30 industries, get 30 games out there, 30 different industries within seven years. So about four years, something like that. Um, but all, all these things really make us unique and I think tie into these uh, huge trends. And just, I don't uh, uh, want to show too much right here on, uh, on national television or YouTube or wherever I'm at, but we do have, and you're not going to see too much in the light, we do have a prototype of the game working. You can actually um, open restaurants, you pick a location, you would put it on a map of Austin, um, and you can uh, pick your location. You can pick, I'm going to do fine dining as opposed to fast food or family dining, and it's going to be Mexican food. Now I've got to have a couple of chefs. That one is excellent and amiable. This one is good and enabler. Once in a while you get stung with a prima donna, which is going to hurt your profits. And here I have a manager to handle service. It's turned green, that means I can open the restaurant. Let me also put in an inventory control system and some employee training ways to improve my cost effectiveness. And all I do is say go, and it's going to ask me my name. It's going to take my picture. I'll just flip through that here real brief briefly. Uh, and, and publish a newspaper saying, look, uh, uh, Gary's restaurant has opened. Here's his picture. It's got sounds here in the background. I recorded in a real restaurant. Uh, and the scores, though, that come out of here, uh, this restaurant did 2.473 million in the first year in revenue and 100,000 profit. That's actually a great start. I played the game a lot. It's so important that this be fun and this be great for our customers. That's been a hallmark of all my companies. And, and uh, that's a great start. And those numbers are based on that restaurant survey. So the numbers you get for fast food or for uh, fine dining or family dining are going to be based on realistic numbers. Now, chances involved. This game never plays the same way. We've got a great team of people. We're very lean and mean. We have a core group. I'm designing the game. Erwin Mazariegos is turning them into this and doing a wonderful job. And then we're surrounded with an advisory board and a board of directors with game experts from Austin and from outside of Austin and, and business experts. And uh, we're really playing it hard because we want to make it a great game. Um, Guys, if you'd like to know more about Big Wig Games, about the company, about how you can help with the process, would you like to be a play tester? Uh, I'm easy to find on the internet. I have a website, Hoover's World, uh, but my email address is down here, GaryHoove at MSN.com. I really believe that what we're doing is something that's very important, uh, that'll make the world a better place. Uh, you have all these games that are violence and, and crime and, you know, uh, running over hookers and all this stuff. And that's all fine. I, I believe in free enterprise, but I think we can do something that's uh, better, that's stronger, that's every bit as fun as certainly challenging at the right level. This game you're going to be able to learn in like 30 seconds. It is not that complex. And then the levels and the complexity grow on you over time. You'll be able to play it against people on the other side of the globe, against friends, or against the computer. Uh, that just scratches the surface. You probably have a lot of questions. I'll try to have the answers for you if you get in touch with me. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll talk to you later.